the opposite of good is bad, the opposite of Superman is bizarro, and the opposite of tracking is stabilizing. So let's make things smooth and stable inside After Effects. So there are three main methods to stabilize a footage inside After Effects. Using the classic Stabilize Tracker, also known as Stabilize Motion, using Mocha AE Reverse Tracking, and using the more modern VFX Warp Stabilizer. So instead of talking about it, let's see it in action. I'll use this handheld underwater turtle clip to demonstrate it, and there is a link to download the clip in the description if you want to follow along. So the first thing that I'm going to do is rename this clip I'll just add a dash and the word classic at the end of it. And then I'm going to use the trucker panel to stabilize the motion. And this is the only place that you can get to this button. So make sure that the trucker panel is on screen. If you can't see it, go to window and choose trucker. Over here, I'll click on stabilize motion and this is going to open the clip in the layer panel. And of course, show me the old school truck point one. I'll zoom into the footage by pressing on the period key. And then I'll grab everything and move it on top of this area. So I'll track this texture on the turtle's back. I'll make sure the search area is a bit bigger and also the feature region. And I'm going to analyze forward by clicking on this little button. Notice that the track type here is set to stabilize. And this means that if I'll click apply and then accept the dimensions X and Y, this is going to apply the tracker data back to the clip itself. Or in other words, if I'll drill up the motion trackers and open up the transform, it's going to create keyframes for the anchor point. So if I'm going to go to the beginning and press spacebar, you can see that we have a one point stabilized based on X and Y position. Now obviously we can see that it is moving the footage and it's giving us this black border that we need to compensate for in case our footage is not bigger than the comp that we are using. So in this case, I'll start to drag on the scale value until it will fill the screen. And then I'll go to the beginning. I'll maybe also zoom out now, sometimes you don't need to scale it so much. So I'm going to reduce it to, let's say, 130. And then I'll move the clip so it will be at the lower edge of the frame. And I'll scan the timeline. And I think that we can actually be a little bit more modest and go with lower values. So let's try 124. And again, I'll reposition it. It's a little bit of a trial and error game here. But with a bit of fiddling, as you are seeing here, I can make this work. And now we are upscaling the footage. So if you want, you can try to go to the effect menu and under blur and sharpen, apply the sharpen effect. I'll take this value to 50. And this is going to apply a high pass filter to it and make the texture sharper again. Now there is a better way to do it. I'll show it to you in a moment. But this is the basic and most simplest way to stabilize a shot. However, we have two additional options. The next one that I'm going to show is using Mocha AE. And this is going to give us different results that you may find useful if you are working on a VFX shot. So let me show you how this works. I'll select the layer in the timeline and duplicate it. I'll close these properties and then I'll rename this Mocha. I'll switch off the visibility for the original. And then I'm going to delete the motion tracker data, as well as, of course, delete all the keyframes for the anchor point and reset the clip back to its original state. I'm also going to say goodbye to the sharpen. We don't need it for this example. Then I'll go to the effect menu and under Boris FX Mocha, I'll apply Mocha AE, which comes with After Effects. I'll click on the Mocha logo to launch the Mocha interface. And then I'll select the rectangular X spline layer. And I'm going to do more or less the same thing that I did with the stabilized motion tracker inside After Effects, meaning I'm just defining this area to track. I'll turn off skew because I'm only interested in the translation scale and rotation. So this one is going to also give us the scale and rotation properties. And then I'll track forward by clicking on this button. 
I'll speed up the process. And once the tracker has finished, I'll go back to the beginning. This is very important. And then I'll click on show planner surface. This is what we are going to take out of Mocha. So this is the data. And the most important thing is to also click on expand the planner surface. So basically we are going to use the entire frame here. You can name your layer if you want to, but in this case, I'm just going to save and exit Mocha. And now I'll open up the tracking data. I'll click on create track data and select the layer that I've just tracked. Click OK. And then I'll change the export option from corner pin to transform. And I'm going to export the data to the same layer. So this is why I've named this. So I know that I'm selecting the correct one. And the most important thing is to click on invert over here, which is going to invert, or in other words, reverse the tracking data that we've collected. And finally, I'll click on apply export. Then I'll press spacebar to preview the result and you can get a sense of how this works. So this is going to give us this result, which is going to basically stabilize the turtle in its full glory in the middle of the frame and this can be very helpful if you want to use it in order to paint on this turtle's back and then reverse the result, which is something that I'm going to talk about in more detail in the next tutorial. Again, because this is moving the footage, we have some black edges. And if you want to compensate for that, I just want to show you that under the transform, in this case, the scale property is keyframes. So it's not a good idea to scale the keyframes from here. You can, of course, select the word scale and scale everything at the same time. But an easier way to walk around this problem is go to the effect menu and then under the distort category, apply the transform effect. And this is going to give you another set of transformation that are being applied after the Mocha stabilization. So I can scrub the scale value over here until it fills the screen. And of course I need to check it towards the end. And in the beginning, I see that I still have some leftovers. So let's just scale it a touch more and go to the beginning and preview the result. So I'm just going to guess that these are not the droids we are looking for. So I'll stop the playback and let's explore the last and probably best option to stabilize the clip using the VFX warp stabilizer effect. And for that, you guessed it, I'm going to duplicate another copy of this. This is just so we can compare between all three results. So again, pressing Command D to duplicate the clip. I'm just going to turn off the visibility of the other things. And as before, I'm just going to delete the things that I don't need. So I'm basically resetting the transformation, deleting the anchor point keyframes, and I'm also going to say goodbye to the sharpen effect. And the last thing is naming this. And finally, I can click on warp stabilizer from the tracker panel. And while it's analyzing in the background, I can show you three other ways to apply the same effect. First, you can right click on it and from the track and stabilize, you can apply the warp stabilizer VFX from here. Another way to work is to go to the animation menu and choose Warp Stabilizer VFX. And the third option that you have is under Effect, Distort, and then the name of the effect, of course, is Warp Stabilizer. The effects, by the way, inside After Effects are alphabetically organized. All right, so while I was taking my time, After Effects finishes with the stabilization and we have a result. Now, the beauty of this effect is that we can just press spacebar and see what the automatic tool came up with. And I'm going to say that without even fiddling with it, it's going to give you the best results. Now, there are a few things worth mentioning about the way this effect is working. And I'm going to show it to you while After Effects is playing this clip taking advantage of the uninterrupted playback option that After Effects offers you. All right, so the first thing here is the result. We can use smooth motion, which is going to give us this result, or we can say no motion. And of course, After Effects will need to stabilize the motion again, and we are going to get a similar result to what we got out of Mocha. I'll switch it back to smooth motion, and we can even enlarge the smoothness. So you can go beyond 100%, by the way. You can take this value to a really high factor. And I'm going to talk more about it in the next tutorial. 
So this is something that you may want to fiddle with. In my case, I'm just going to right click on it and ask After Effects to reset it to its default state. The next thing is the method, and it will be easier to explain if I'll first show you the framing here. So by default, After Effects is going to choose Stabilize, Crop, and Auto Scale. But let's just take a look at the Stabilize Only mode, which is very similar to what we got out of the Stabilize Motion button. Now it's not exactly the same, because by default, again, it is using the Subspace Warp method. I'll switch it to Position, and this is actually going to be more closer to what we've managed to create with the stabilized motion. So we are just moving the clip and compensating for it with additional scale in case we are going to change it from stabilize only to stabilize crop and auto scale, or we can actually use stabilize and crop, which is just going to crop the image to its minimal dimensions, leaving us with this nice frame. So of course we can go with crop and auto scale. And the next option here is synthesize edges. I'm going to choose it. This is not going to play in real time because After Effects needs to create those missing borders here based on the content that it can see in previous and upcoming frames. So totally up to you. You can use it if you want. In this case, I'm just going to return back to stabilize only, press spacebar to preview again, and then I'll show you that you can also use position, scale, and rotation. Again, very similar to what we created with Mocha. And you can do it also with the stabilized motion inside After Effects if you're willing to add additional trackers such as rotation and scale. And we also have the perspective option, which is going to use a corner pin distortion to create a better stabilization. And all of those three methods are not going to warp the image. The last one, however, the subspace warp, is going to add another algorithm which is going to stretch and warp the pixels themselves to create a better warping. Now, totally up to you how you want to use it, and it's also depending on the footage that you are trying to stabilize. But in most cases, you probably want to go with this one, which is why it's the default behavior. Now I'm going to move it back to stabilize, crop, and auto scale because I just want to show you that using this very smart algorithm, we only need to scale it up to 112% more or less and not the big numbers that I showed you before. You can also tick this preserved scale, which is going to try to even reduce this number, giving us in most case a better result, or you can add your own additional scale over here. Now I'm going to discuss all the advanced features in the next tutorial because I don't want this one to be too long. So what I want to show you is how you can make the result even better. And by better, I mean to try and reduce the motion blur artifacts that happens frequently after using the warp stabilizer effect. So I'll pause the playback. Let's take a closer look at the back of the turtle here. I'm also going to zoom in so it will be easier to spot and see that due to the fact that we are warping the pixels, we have this very strange motion blur artifact that happens when you use this effect. And if you want to try and solve it, you can go to the effect menu and under blur and sharpen, try to work with the camera shake de-blur effect. And this effect is going to use the duration over here, the blur duration, so you have between five to nine frames that After Effects is going to average between and try to remove the blurriness, the artifacts blur that we saw before. You also have two methods, the standard one and the high quality, which is going to be slower to process I'm going to leave it with the standard, but you can get a sense of what it does over here to the back of the turtle. And by the way, it's also going to affect the background, but we are more worried about the moving texture on the turtle's back. If you want, you can make it stronger by enlarging the strength as well as play with the shake sensitivity. So let's just go a bit before and play the result. And hopefully now you can see that we got red of this very annoying artifact. Now to make it more sharp, you can go to the effect menu 
And my recommendation is from the blur and sharpen category, go with the unsharp mask that will be able to recover more details. So I'll set the amount to 100 and let's go with 1.5 for the radius. And then I'm going to show it to you before and after, and hopefully you can see the difference with the YouTube compression. The last thing that I'm going to apply over here, because it is an underwater scene, is from the color correction category, and this is the vibrance effect, which is a selective saturation effect. So I'm just going to raise the vibrance. Let's go with something along the lines of 80, and then I'm going to zoom out. And actually let's go and maximize the frame and preview the result. And so this is my recipe to get good stabilization results in After Effects. If it is a simple position shake, you can get away with the classic stabilized motion. For specific VFX workflows, you can use the Mocha AE reverse stabilization, but in most cases, you're probably going to rely on the warp stabilizer effect. And this effect has even more things to offer. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you won't miss the next tutorial where I'll explore all the advanced features in more detail. Until then, stay steady and stable. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.